I think she did astonishingly well. I mean, she was sober, straightforward, calm, uh, answered the questions directly. I mean, she was, I'm afraid, it was a, a sort of metaphorical comparison with a coalition of chaos up against her, the noise and the argument and so on. She was the voice of calm in the middle of it. I thought she did very well indeed. An interesting, probably Theresa May did well not to go because she wouldn't have done as well as Amber Rudd, I suspect. No, I don't think that's true. I mean, the, 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 bear in mind a couple of things. Number one, she appeared on the same program as uh, Jeremy Corbyn on Monday. She's doing the same again on Friday. She's done five and a half thousand miles of touring around the country, answered loads of questions from public and journalists. And, and, and do you think she watched tonight? Do you know if she watched the debate tonight? I don't, honestly, I don't know. I suspect she's got... I mean, bear in mind she's got to run the country at the same time. I suspect she's got a bit of homework to do. So you don't think she watched the debate? I don't know, but I've, I've, I've no idea, but I, don't, I wouldn't necessarily assume so. It's embarrassing if you're the leader of the party, though, you're the Prime Minister, and someone stands in for you and, to some extent, shows you up by answering the questions so nimbly, which hasn't been the characteristic no, of I, Theresa May in this campaign. I, I, I don't think that shows it up at all. I mean, one of the real characteristics, underestimated characteristics of great leaders, is that they have good people around them. You know, she's got good people around her, and Amber Rudd is one of the stars of the people around her. So that's a very good thing. It also, uh, Amber was able to be as straightforward and calm as she is is because we have a strong argument. We have a strong case, and she made it well. Right. One of the things she said related to your department, uh, uh, she said that when it comes to Brexit, you have a plan. I yes, have to admit, absolutely, all, we do. I thought you had a set of so, objectives, but having objectives is not the same as having a plan. A plan is uh, well, about what well, you do have... when they don't like your objectives. <laughs> well, we have both. I mean, you know, what, what, of course, the, the manifesto has a page and a half, but what it refers to is well over 100 pages. There are two white papers, uh, a major speech, the Lancaster yeah. House speech, uh, the, that long letter. But behind all of that as well, that's the, those are the aims, the idea of a free trade agreement, the idea of a customs agreement, the idea of continuing yeah. uh, counter-terrorism, cooperation, security, all those things are there. But underpinning all that, there's also a plan. Indeed, I was chairing a meeting today uh, on, uh, on the first steps of the plan when we, uh, right. when we, when we hope uh, we win the election and we start into 11 days later into the negotiations. Well, great. So maybe, as it's a Brexit election by your own uh, admission, maybe you can share with us some aspects of the plan. Maybe you can tell us what your immigration policy will be, for example, once we leave. Well, the first thing we've said is that we're going to bring control back to Britain. That, that's the most important thing. That's I mean, not a policy. Yeah, I'm the, so sorry. The, that's well, just a vague oh, oh, phrase. Yes, Come yeah, on, yeah, what's yes, the policy? Yes, yeah. Yeah, wait a minute. Let me, let me get to the point, Evan. Firstly, of course, in the referendum, people voted for control of borders, control of money, control of their own laws. All of those matter. In the control of borders, we're talking about bringing back control to Britain so that Parliament can decide on what eventually the immigration policy is. And we've said clearly the aim is to bring it down to sustainable levels. That is not a policy, with respect. That is not a plan. Well, it, well, it, from the point of view of the British public, what they want to know is what the outcome is. Too often, you know, the commentators like you, they want to go into the weeds and the details. It's fine, <laughs> perfectly reasonable, but, <laughs> but people want to know what the outcome will be, and the outcome will be that. You've told us that no deal is better than a bad deal, but you haven't told us yep. how bad a deal has to be. I just want to ask you, would you walk away, literally say, no deal, if, for example, the European Court of Justice had to be involved in the European Aviation Agreement that we sign or something like that, is that simply yeah. no deal is better well, than a deal yeah. that has anything with the ECJ? Well, it, there, are, there, are many, there, are many, there are many components of a, of a bad deal and we're not going to draw the lines for you so that our negotiating interlocutors on the other side can say, oh, we can push it to there and we can push it to there. What I will say to you is we're not going to have the European Court of Justice ruling on issues inside Britain. But this isn't a plan. This is a lot of things you just say that you're going to do, but there's no plan well, if the others don't offer them to us. I'm not trying to find out what you clear. do if they just confront you with a set of demands that are very unpleasant and are not compatible with what you've just set out. No, no. 
Not at all. Why, why, why are we going to present you with un uh, incompatible or unpleasant things? What we're saying is we're looking for the best deal possible. A free trade agreement, yeah. uh, a customs agreement, you know, an agreement on uh, counter-terrorism and on security. Those are not unpalatable things. And in addition, we're going to seek to, uh, to open up the, re the free trade agreements to the rest of the world. They're all very good things, not very bad things. Okay. Just the last one. There's another poll this evening. A, a, a YouGov poll has something like a 3% difference between the Tories and Labour. What are you reading into this, into this surge? Maybe too much look, Theresa May and not enough Amber Rudd on the campaign? Look, look you, you, you've been, a, you've been a, um, a, a TV commentator, a radio commentator for a long time, and you're very numerate. You, ab above all people, should know how untrustworthy polls are. What it does do is remind people that if, we, you, know, if you don't have uh, Theresa May going to that negotiation 11 days after the election, it'll be Jeremy Corbyn. And the people watching your programme have got to make a decision which they want. I know which is clear to me.